Let's take a look at a few more modeling tools before moving on from edit mode. So on our default scene here, let's hit tab to go into edit mode for our default cube. And the next couple commands that I want to share with you aren't actually in the tool shelf. We're going to have to find them in the menus. The first one is subdivide. And that's just a simple way to cut everything in half. We can either find it in the edge menu under subdivide, or we could right click and find it there. It's pretty common, so they've listed it at the top. Let's see what happens when we select everything with A and hit subdivide. Our entire mesh has been cut in half in all directions, so now we have a lot more vertices to work with. I'll hit Control Z and undo that, and let's see what happens when we subdivide on individual components. So I'll stick in vertex select mode, and if I just select some vertices that aren't connected by any edges and I hit subdivide, then nothing's going to happen because a vertex is just a single point in space, so you can't really cut it in half. But if I were to select two connected vertices, which is just the same as selecting an edge, then if we right click and subdivide, then we can create a vertex right in the middle between those two. So again, just cutting it straight in half. We can also do the same thing by selecting two edges. This time we'll go into edge select mode, because if I try to select all four of these vertices here, it'll also select the face because these are all connected, but I just want to select the two opposing edges. So I'll go into edge select mode and shift select them there. And then if I right click and then subdivide, then not only has it cut it in half, it's also created an edge right in between those two new vertices. So that might be a good way to, for example, make a shape of a house. So I'll just hit G and then Z, move this up. And now we have a more roof like shape. So that's one way of adding new geometry. One quick note is that subdividing an edge ring is exactly the same thing as adding a loop cut that we talked about in the last video. So if I were to hit Alt and Control and left click to select the edge ring, and I'll hit Z and then go into wireframe view just so you can see which edges are selected a little bit better. If I take all of those edges, right click and subdivide, that's just going to add an edge loop right in the middle. Now, usually I'll just add an edge loop with Control R instead, so it's not super useful to do that but it can be useful to create a new loop in between only parts of the mesh. So if I wanted to do that same thing, but not really include this side, then I could just select these edges instead, right click and subdivide. And now I have a new loop going down here that just kind of stops at those ends. We can also subdivide faces as we saw in the beginning. I'll go to face select mode here and just select a face, right click and subdivide. And you can see it's been cut in half both ways. If I try to subdivide this side though, then nothing's going to happen. Because I added this edge before, then it added another vertex to this side here. And so it has more than four edges. If I pull this out along the X axis, you can see that a little bit better. And since this isn't a quad, it didn't really know where to split it. So I'll hit control Z and undo all of that. And let's just look at the default cube here. If I take a face, right click and subdivide, there we get the cut that goes both ways. We probably won't actually be using this tool a whole lot, but the idea of subdivision is going to be really important because in the next video, we're going to be talking about subdivision surfaces, which is kind of another layer on top of this concept. But for now, just try subdividing different components and see how it works. The next thing that I want to show you is how to create a vertex anywhere. This is actually an extrusion. And if we go to our extrude tool in the toolbar, if I left click and hold so I can get to the other extrude tools, I can choose extrude to cursor. So if I select a vertex here, which right now I just have a whole face selected. So if I click anywhere, then it's going to go absolutely crazy, but I'll hit alt a to deselect everything. And then just use my box select tool to select, you know, single vertex over here and then switch to the extrude to cursor tool. Then wherever I click, it's going to extrude that vertex all the way out. And I'll hit control Z to undo that. If I wanted to do that on a whole edge, then I can do that as well. So I could take both of these, go to my extrude to cursor tool and just extrude this edge outwards. Now I don't often use this as a tool in and of itself, just because it's a little bit hard to control, but I do use this to add new vertices all the time because there's a really handy shortcut for it. So I'll go back to my box select tool over here and I'll take one vertex. And the way to create a vertex anywhere is just to hit control and then right click and it'll extrude that selected vertex out into space wherever you clicked. So I can just continue holding control and right clicking and just creating whatever shape that I want. This will also work for edges. So if I just select this whole edge here with shift and then control right click again, just extrude that outwards. Or you could try this with a face control, right click and extrude that face outwards towards the cursor. But this also works even if we have nothing selected. So if I hit alt a to deselect everything and I hit control right click out in empty space, then it'll just create a vertex there. Now we can't see it because we're in face select mode. So we need to switch over to vertex select mode and then we see it. Then wherever we click again, control right click, then it'll extrude out towards that. But I'll hit control Z until they both disappear. 
and just go ahead practicing deselecting everything, control and then right clicking to place a new vertex anywhere in the scene. The reason this is helpful is that we can now draw shapes however we want in empty space. So I'll hit A to select everything and then delete and vertices. And just so that we can do this on a flat plane, I'll hit seven to go to top view. And now let's try drawing whatever we want. In this case, I'll just draw a simple triangle, but you can make it however complex you want to. So for the first corner of the triangle, I'll just hit control and right click. And then over here, I'll make the second corner, control and right click. And then I'll make the top corner, control and right click. So now we've created all of the vertices that our triangle needs, but we still need to connect the beginning and the end. For that, we can use the next tool that I want to talk about, which is the fill tool. So let's select both of these vertices that we want to connect and then go to vertex. And it's not actually called fill, but that's essentially what it does. New edge slash face from vertices, and it uses the hotkey F. So let's click that. And now we have these two connected. The hotkey F though is really fast. So I control Z to undo that and then just select these two vertices and hit F to fill them. We can also use that same hockey to create faces. So now that we have this empty set of edges, I'll just select all of them here and we can be in either vertex or edge select mode. This doesn't matter. And then I'll hit F to fill. And since these are all connected to each other, that'll just make one face. And so with that, we've made a polygon from scratch. This might seem like a little bit of a tedious way to make a shape and it definitely is but I wanted to show you this right out of the gate because technically you can make any shape in 3D by just creating new vertices and then connecting them. Now there are a couple things about using the fill tool that kind of trip people up at the beginning. So I want to show you what can happen and how to avoid those types of scenarios. But for that, I need to get back to our default cube here. So I'll select our whole triangle with A, hit delete and vertices, and then shift A and cube. So I mentioned before that if you select two vertices and then hit F to fill, it creates an edge between them. So let's do that, but using two vertices on either side of this face here. So two vertices that aren't already connected. Well, I'll hit F to fill, and it looks like we just split this face in half, similar to using the knife tool. But in fact, that's not actually what happened. If we go to face select mode, I'll just hit three and select this face. You can see that it's not actually cut in half. We would expect to be able to select these two triangles separately, but we can't. We can select this edge if we go into edge select mode and move it around, or we could select the face, but it didn't actually split the face, it just laid a new edge on top. And that can be really, really confusing. So just remember if you're working on a face, don't use F to fill. Instead, you should use the knife tool or the connect tool. So we'll talk about connect a lot more in the fundamentals of mesh modeling, but just as a quick intro, I'll hit control Z a few times to undo all of that. Uh, if you do want to split a face very quickly without using the knife tool, you can go to vertex and then connect vertex path or use the hotkey J. That will actually split it in half, and now we have two separate triangles. But if that's a lot to remember, then just use the knife tool instead. You can always hit K to go to the knife tool and just cut things manually like that. So if you're working with faces, use the knife tool. But if you're just working with a couple things in empty space, for example, if I hit Shift D, and remember that's the hotkey for duplicate, and I duplicate this edge out into the middle of nowhere, and I'm just tracing a completely new shape, if I wanted to connect this back to the original shape, then I could just select all of these vertices and hit F to fill. So go ahead and practice using F to fill. And then I want to talk about one more way of cleaning things up or solving some problems that might arise as you're using some of your modeling tools. And one of the most common culprits for modeling issues is doubles. And that's when we have vertices lying directly on top of each other. This can happen in a lot of different situations and there's just so many ways to accidentally make doubles, but a lot of them, at least in Blender, happen when you extrude something or inset something and then hit escape. And now you just have one component lying directly on top of another component. So we canceled the movement, but we didn't cancel the extrusion like we talked about before. And now it's just lying directly on top. This can definitely cause some issues because if we try to, you know, bevel something, let's just take this top edge and try to bevel it. You know, this isn't going to work and we're going to be confused as to why. Well, the way that we actually solve that, if that happens for whatever reason and we can't undo it, is that we can merge those vertices. So in order to merge them, we have to select both of those vertices that are lying directly on top of each other. But remember that in Blender, what we see is what we select. So if I just select one of them, then I can't really select the other one very easily, even if I use B to box select, because one vertex is gonna be on top of the other one. So what I'll do is I'll either go into X-ray view by hitting Z and swiping down, or if you don't see that because you didn't enable the option in the user preferences, you can always get to the X-ray view up here at the top right. But I'll go into X-ray view, and select both of those vertices, either with shift select, but it's probably easier to use box select. And then we need to merge them. So let's go to mesh, down to merge, 
or we could use the hotkey M to bring up this menu and choose at center. Now, if we select this area, there's only one vertex to work with. And we can do the same thing on all of these corners. Select both vertices, hit M, and merge at center. But since this is such a common thing to need to fix, there's an operation that makes it a whole lot more simple. We could select all of our vertices here, or just hit A to select everything in the entire mesh, but generally I don't recommend that because sometimes it can have unintended consequences on areas that you're not looking at. But let's say we know we have some doubles here at the bottom. I'll just select all of the areas that have doubles, and then I'll hit M and choose by distance. So now it's only going to merge the vertices that are right on top of each other. And you'll see here at the bottom that we removed two vertices and that's exactly what we were expecting. So this is a really handy hotkey. And if I just take this vertex, I'll show you exactly what it's doing. Um, I'll hit shift D and just duplicate this vertex out a few times and I'll select all of them like so. And then if I hit M and merge by distance, at first nothing's going to happen. But if I go to my redo panel and I increase the merge distance, in this case, I want to increase it very slowly. So I'll hold shift as I'm left clicking and dragging here. And as I move this up, you can see that it starts to merge with the other vertices and they just kind of snap into the original just like that. And once this distance is greater than the distance between all of these vertices, then they all get merged into that one and we've removed four vertices. But usually if I have to increase that distance, then I'll also go back and you know decrease it a second time uh, just so that the default isn't left up at that high number because otherwise you can accidentally merge things on the other side of your mesh that you didn't want to merge and that can be a real pain to try to fix. Also in the merge menu, you can merge by the first selected vertex or the last selected vertex. So if I take two and I want to merge them together and I hit M, then I could either choose at first or at last and it'll just snap it up to whichever one we chose. But I'll hit Control Z to undo that. And I realize that at this point, we're going through a lot of these tools here, but it's all somewhat abstract and a little bit hypothetical because I've shown how to use the tools themselves, but we haven't really seen them in action to make something specific. So if it all feels a little bit nebulous and you're not entirely sure how to use these tools to make the things that you want, don't worry, we'll get to that in a little bit. For now, just mess around with these tools in isolation. And then once you feel like you've gotten a general idea of how they work, then we'll come back in a little bit and do a project that includes all of them. And that's what's gonna really make it stick in your head. But we did need to do a general introduction like this first, so that when we get to that point, then we can move a little bit faster. So I would definitely encourage you to try everything out that you saw in this video, but again, if it didn't immediately click, that's totally okay. But that's enough edit mode for now. In the next video, we'll learn how to modify the mesh in object mode.